Today I'm going to talk about the Docker, and it's probably something you've already heard about, perhaps as a buzzword on all of those job searching platforms. But maybe you never understood what the bus was all about. Why should you bother with this Docker thing if all you're doing is npm run dev and your web app is conveniently opened in your browser? The problems really come when it's finally time to deploy your application. After all that blood, sweat and tears, your product will leave the safe harbor of your development machine ready to be put on an actual server. And this server isn't running the same configuration as your RTX 4090 gaming rig. All of a sudden you realize it's not even got Node.js installed on it. But when you go to install it with apt, you realize that it's completely outdated. Oh, and by the way, that MongoDB instance running on the server must also stay on an older version because you have another legacy app on the same machine that your boss stubbornly refuses to give up on. But let's imagine for a second that you managed to solve all of these dependency issues. Your boss comes knocking on your door again because you've got a sudden increase of users. You need to scale up. And it's been decided that this should be done horizontally by simply adding more machines. And the story repeats itself all over again because suddenly you have 10 new machines to configure. What if you could have a reproducible environment instead with all the dependencies configured and ready to be control C, control V on however many machines your boss desires? That is indeed possible with Docker. Now, how does this work? You start by writing a Docker file, and this is like a recipe for your containers. You specify the contents of the app, the configuration, which files to include, which operating system to build upon, and that is then compiled into a Docker image, which is like a ready to use blueprint to create new containers from. A Docker image is something that you might publish to a registry, for example, so that it can be reused by others or pulled down into multiple different machines. The image is like I said, a blueprint for what is known as a container. And a container is like a small little isolated machine that is running inside of your larger machine. It has its own isolated file system, networking, permissions, etc. And one of the greatest benefits of running inside of Docker is that your bug manifested little experiment app won't accidentally mess everything up within the host operating system. So let's get started with containerizing our first application with Docker. Of course, you need to have Docker installed for this, but it's quite easy to do. All you have to do is follow the instructions on the Docker website. So here I have a really small little dummy project that I've written in Golang with the Fiber Framework. It's just a basic HTTP service, which will return a little JSON output. If we go ahead and run this, we can see that it's super simple. We're practically just returning a JSON array here. But we wish to containerize this web application. And we can get started by creating a new Docker file. The first thing that we wish to do is to decide which image to base our image on. In this case, we're going to be basing our image on the Golang image because that contains the Golang compiler, all the Golang dependencies and executables ready to build our Golang application. So we're going to write from Golang latest as builder. And then let's specify the working directory. This is where we will be building our application. So let's write work there app. And then let's copy over all of these files. We want to copy over all of our source code files into this container. So we can do copy everything in the current directory into the current working directory inside of the Docker file. Then we want to execute a command and we can do that with run directive. So we can do a run go mod download, which will simply download all of the dependencies. And then we can do go build output dummy. And this will simply build our Golang application. So this will build an executable and call it dummy and place it inside of the container. After building our executable, we actually want to set up a different base image because we want to specify the running environment for this application. We don't need to have all of the source codes of our 
Docker intro app, right? We only need to have executable, in our case, this dummy file inside of our container. So I'm gonna specify from Ubuntu latest. And then I will specify a different working directory. I will specify a root as our working directory. And then I'm actually gonna copy over our build executable into this container. So this is what is known as a multi-stage build. We actually specify a building environment that is different, that is separate from the actual running container where we actually run the executable. So we copy from builder and we copy app slash dummy into the current working directory. Then we just specify which port that we're interested in exposing. And in our case, we are only listening to the 3000 port. So that's what we are gonna be exposing. And then we will specify a CMD and this will be the running command. When we do a Docker run later, this is the command or the executable that we wish to run. And what we do we want to run? Well, we want to run the dummy command. So we want to run this dummy executable that we have built. So let's try building a Docker image out of this Docker file. We can do that with the Docker build. Here I'm gonna specify T. So this is, so this is what is known as a tag. We can tag our Docker images with different tags depending on variants and versions. So like we have this Golang latest, we might have a different tag for a different version of our image. But we want to build a dummy, let's just call it dummy latest. And then we just specify that we are one that we wish to build a Docker file in the current working directory. There we go, successfully tagged the dummy latest. And now we can try running and spinning up an actual container based on our image. So we can do docker run dummy latest. And we can see that our fiber service is running now inside of the container. Let's try visiting localhost 3000. I want you to look at that. This site can't be reached. And this is due to the isolation that I mentioned previously. We have an actual isolated network. This port 3000 is not exposed out to the host operating system. It's not actually exposed on the host machine. If we want to do that, we actually need to pass it through. So we need to pass through the network traffic and we can do that with Docker run as well. We can actually specify that we wish that the host port 3000 will be bound to the container port 3000. So if we do that and try again, we can see now that it's being passed on and we can access it from localhost 3000. Now you might be wondering how we could containerize a client application as well. Maybe you don't have a Golang backend, maybe you just only have a Svelte application, React, Angular application, what have you. You want to containerize your frontend application and how can we do that with Docker? It is in fact very similar. All that we do is we base our Docker build environment, base it on Node.js, and then we simply do npm install and npm run build. This and this is how we usually build our frontend application. Now remember that when we build an SPA like this, all that we really get out from it are a bunch of files. We get a HTML file and a bunch of JavaScript files. And that can be served by any HTTP server that you desire, as long as it can host uh, and serve HTML and JS and CSS files, then you're ready to go. In my case, I selected Nginx. So this is one of the most popular HTTP services, really high performance service. You just simply copy over the built HTML, JavaScript, CSS files into the base Nginx folder. And now we can just run this with Nginx. We just run the Nginx server and it will serve all of these files for us. So there's also the case when you have multiple services spread out. Maybe you're building with a microservice architecture or you simply just have a frontend and a backend and you want to build those and ship them together. And one of the ways to do that is with the help of Docker Compose. It's a tool for defining and running multi-container applications. Docker Compose allows you to set up all of the services and the networks, environment variables, and you place all of that in a single Docker Compose configuration file in the YML configuration language. And then all that you have to do to spin up all of these different containers is just running Docker Compose up. And here's an example of that. Here we have our dummy backend that we have written in Golang and then the frontend which we have written in Svelte together with Vite to combine these two services together. All that we have to do is create the Docker Compose file. So I'm gonna create a compose.yaml file 
And the Docker Compose file will be incredibly simple. We just have two services, the front end and the back end service, which are based on these two images that we have created, the dummy front end and the dummy back end images. And here we can also specify which ports that we want to bind on the host operating system. So here we bind the Nginx port and here we bind our back end port. If I go ahead and run this with the Docker Compose app, we can see that we can now access our front end application and we can also access as our backend application. What is so nice is that we can compose this together with other dependencies or other dependent services that we might have. We might be dependent on a MongoDB database. Well, of course, we can also run MongoDB inside of a container with Docker. So we can add this as a different service. And here I'm also using volumes. In order to have the database files stored persistently, we actually move them outside of the containers. So we actually store them in the host file system so that they won't be removed when the container is removed. So that is all that I wanted to show about Docker. Hopefully you have a now a better idea why everyone loves Docker and wants to containerize their applications. Of course, there's much more to learn about both Docker and Docker Compose. You can find out more in their awesome documentation. But other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.